Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Derek and today I'm going to be doing a comparison between the Yamaha Montage and the Core Chronos. Now these are two of my uh, favorite keyboards, some of my favorite keyboards here, the Yamaha Montage and the Core Chronos. Very, very powerful keyboards, both of them. I do want to say right off the bat that this is going to be more of a talking video and less of a playing video. As I say in so many of my videos, there are tons of videos that are out. If you just want to hear the Core Chronos, you can go and you can watch videos of people just playing the Core Chronos. And the same is true for the Yamaha Montage. I believe the Monha Montage came out in 2016. The Core Chronos, the original Core Chronos came out in 2011, has most of the same sounds basically. Um, you can hear them. There's tons of videos and stuff that are out on them, but I want to give some other information and cover some other things that uh, are a little bit more, a little bit less popular on uh, YouTube and platforms and stuff like this, because as somebody, me personally, as somebody who uses these keyboards and puts them through their paces, both in the studio and in live, um, um, sounds is only one important aspect of the keyboards themselves. So there's a whole lot of other aspects and stuff that I, you know, consider very, very important. And so I, I want to basically talk about a lot of what these keyboards have to offer, because a lot of times when someone is trying to make a buying decision and they're looking at something in the price range of one of these two keyboards, both of these keyboards are oftentimes on deck as far as maybe wanting to use, uh, maybe wanting to buy one of these keyboards. And so I'm going to do a comparison to hopefully help somebody make a buying decision. Now, another thing that I also want to say is I do understand that these two keyboards aren't really direct comparisons. A lot of people compare them. They're in the same price range. A lot of times if someone is looking at maybe purchasing a Kronos, they're looking at, you know, looking at uh, the Yamaha Montage as well and vice versa. But I do need to say that the Core Kronos is a music workstation. So the the category of keyboard that this belongs in is a workstation. It is designed for you to be able to compose and arrange and record and so on and so forth, full productions, just using the keyboard and not needing anything else to do. So you don't need to connect it to a doll. You don't need anything like that. It is a full blown production system, the core chronos. Now the Yamaha montage is not a workstation. According to Yamaha, it is a synthesizer. Yes, if you go on a musical website and you're looking for keyboards and you type in a workstation, the Yamaha Montage will come up. But that's because that's the way they design their searches because they understand that somebody who's looking for a workstation may very well be at home with a Yamaha Montage, but that does not make it a workstation. I think the main thing to understand here is that Yamaha is not trying to create a workstation keyboard. It's not a workstation. Hi, I'm Phil Clendenin. I'm here at End Stuff Music to show you a little bit about the Montage Music Synthesizer. Music Synthesizer. Now, Montage is a music synthesizer, and what that means is it's about you being able to make sound. It is a synthesizer. That's why the sequencer in it is only a pattern sequencer. Uh, it's not a full blown sequencer. You can't go in there and edit a bunch of your notes and do a whole lot of stuff that you can really do on the Kronos as far as the sequencer is concerned because it is not a workstation. It actually ships with software. They give you Cubase, a version of Cubase. It comes with it and you're supposed to install it, you know, into your computer and use this in conjunction with a DAW. The core Kronos is not the same. It's, it's all in one. It's all designed for you to use it you know, all by itself. And so they're technically in two different categories. Now, Yamaha used to make, or yeah, Yamaha used to make the motif, the Yamaha motif and the whole motif series, the motif series, their workstations, they all have sequencers and stuff like that on them. They're full blown workstations designed to do all of your recording and everything on the keyboard itself. Um, but when they came out with the montage, they dropped the whole workstation idea. So they no longer make a flagship workstation. Um, Korg recently, very, very recently here, like in the, in the last month or so, they have actually discontinued the Korg Kronos. So if you're thinking about getting a Korg Kronos, you may want to pick one up really quickly because I'm pretty sure once they're gone, they're gone. Um, so they 
uh this is a workstation they came out with another keyboard which is called the korg nautilus now the nautilus is another full blown workstation designed to do everything inside of the keyboard itself so uh but the nautilus is not really a flagship it's not a step up from the core chronos it's really more of a really more of a step down to be honest they remove some of the controls and stuff that you have they removed after touch and stuff from the key bed uh you don't get the little joystick and stuff uh all the sliders and stuff are gone you do get a few uh, knobs and stuff like that but they really just kind of stripped it back made it less expensive and uh pretty soon that's really going to be the only workstation uh, besides the chrome i guess no flagship workstation it's really going to be the flagship workstation that they offer even though core chronos technically speaking is the flagship but this has been discontinued the yamaha montage to date has not been discontinued yamaha is still making them so i just wanted to make those things clear that this is a workstation this is not so it is not a demerit that this doesn't have a sampler and doesn't have a full-blown uh sequencer and stuff because it's not trying to be a workstation and, and honestly the only two companies that are really making flagship workstations right now uh you know a full-blown workstations are the uh as korg and uh kurzweil so kurzweil just came out with a new uh the k2700 is a workstation designed to do everything inside of your keyboard but uh, yamaha has dropped the whole workstation um idea and really so has roland if you go and look at the roland phantom if you go look online on roland's website the roland phantom says it is a synthesizer it doesn't call it a workstation so that kind of explains why it's only a pattern sequencer that you get in this and uh, uh you only get certain time signatures like four four and three four you can't do six eight time uh it has a 32 bar uh, loop limit and so on and so forth and they're but they give you a ton of different sound packs and stuff like that that can come with it a whole bunch of free stuff that they they you know they just throw in with the with the roland uh phantom and it's just it you know it's got a great workflow great midi integration and all that kind of stuff but it is not truly a workstation so roland right now is not doing workstations uh yamaha is not doing workstations korg and uh korg and uh kurzweil are the only keyboard companies left doing workstations but i do want to talk about these two because people making a buying decision are often comparing these two keyboards and so I want to talk about how they are similar, how they differ, and how they are unique from one another to help you make a buying decision. So the first thing I'm going to do is we're going to turn the keyboards around and we're going to actually compare the backs of the keyboards and their connectivity. So let's go ahead and get into it. All right, so here we are. We're looking at the back of the, uh, the core chronos here. And uh, so first here, starting on this side, uh, you get a left and mono or left and right here. These are your mains and these are all balanced outputs here. And then you get uh, four additional, um, you get four additional outputs as well. And these are um, completely assignable. So you get your, your standard, your left and right. And then you get four additional um, outputs as well. Um, <clears throat> And then they give you the pedals. So you have your damper pedal, which is like your regular sustain pedal, and you get a switch and another and another pedal. So two uh, different pedals uh, that you get is in addition to your um, addition to your um, sustain pedal there. And then it has the um, Sony Phillips uh, digital uh, out and in. So you can come in and directly you can come in, come in or go out of the kernels uh using a just a digital signal here a very clean output and then it has uh, two audio inputs which are uh, these are also balanced as well and you can just hit this little button here and you can change it from either uh, mic or line uh, same over here and uh, you do get some um, volume control here so you can adjust uh, your input level uh when you're coming in with either a microphone or if you're coming in with a uh, uh with like another instrument like a guitar or something or even another keyboard so and then you have your midi out midi in and you have a midi through uh as well uh just going down the keyboard just a little ways here um 
You also get the USB A ports. You get uh, you get two USB A ports and a USB uh, B port as well. And the only other thing that's down on the end there is going to be a power switch. And uh, plus, you're going to also get your um, your uh, your AC. Uh, so the you know the uh, unit is inside. The uh, power unit is inside. So there's no kind of wall wart. Uh, on this instrument, which you wouldn't expect at this uh, at this price range. So anyway, that is the back of the Kronos. And I do want to say that the headphone jack, it does have a headphone jack. The headphone jack is actually on the front of the unit. And uh, that is actually something that I like about the core Kronos. I like having the, the uh, headphone jack in the front. Uh, it makes it actually very convenient where you're not reaching around the back or, you know, your, your cord for your headphone is in some kind of a weird position. Um, just it being right there in the front, it's really kind of, um, it's really kind of convenient, but anyway, now, now, now let's take a look at the, uh, Yamaha montage. So let's take a look at the back of that unit. All right. So now we're looking at the back of the Yamaha montage and we'll just start over here. Uh, this is your, um, you have your inputs, uh, left, a left mono and a right. So here's your, uh, A to D inputs here. And this is where you, you know, you can connect you know, like either a guitar or microphones or another keyboard or whatever, you can plug it right into the instrument right here. Just like the Core Kronos, uh, the switching between mic and line is something that you have to do inside of the software itself. Uh, you don't do it on the outside here. And uh, adjusting the, the input level is done on the top of the keyboard um, versus the back of the keyboard like the Core Kronos where it had, uh, you know, the you could adjust your 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 input level on the back you do it actually up here on the keyboard so um to me it's actually more convenient up here rather than on the back um this got your uh, headphone out uh your headphone jack here of course this one is in the back and then you have your left mono and uh, right so left and right output these are your main outputs here these are balanced as well and then you get two uh signable um outputs as well so now remember on the core chronos you get four um assignable outputs and two mains on here you get two mains and you get two assignable outputs so the core chronos actually has more uh analog outputs on the keyboard but they are um both balanced i know a lot of people don't think that you know whether it's balanced or unbalanced really makes a difference and in a lot of cases most cases uh, i would have to agree with that uh, but sometimes just using it here uh, in the studio, I've got chords and stuff everywhere. Um, my core chronos and my Yamaha Montage are noticeably um, less noisy than my uh, Nord Stage 3 and my Yamaha Modi X. Because the Nord Stage 3 and the Yamaha Modi X, they have unbalanced output jacks. And so... I often get more interference and more noise and stuff like that when I'm sampling and doing different things. I pick up that sound uh, in those keyboards as to where in these, I I do not. So anyway, having the balanced outputs jacks is just uh, kind of nice to me. All right, so then you have your uh, foot controllers. You got a foot controller one and two, and then a sustain pedal, and then an assignable uh, foot switch as well. So this gives you one more additional foot controller um, you get a total of four, including the um, including the sustain pedal, and in the Court Chronos, you get a total of three, including the sustain pedal. So you actually get more um, uh, foot controllers on the Yamaha Montage, and then this also has a MIDI in, out, and through as well. And if we just uh, move down just uh, ever so slightly here. Excellent. So now you have a uh, USB to host. This is so you can go, you know, connect it to your computer and then you have a USB to device and uh, you can uh, connect other units and stuff to that and control them via MIDI that way. Or, you know, you can, you know, plug in your flash drive and so on and so forth. The only other thing that it has on it is your on off switch and plus the AC in as well. So those are the uh, those are the back of the units. Now the core Kronos gives you two USB A ports as to where this only gives you, uh, only gives you one. 
and but this and this doesn't give you the sony phillips digital <clears throat> inputs or uh outputs as like the core chronos does and the core chronos does give you more audio outputs so uh audio analog outputs it gives you more than the montage uh, but with that said i do have to say that the yamaha montage <clears throat> When you connect USB, you can connect USB. We'll talk more about this probably later. Connect USB to like a DAW. Um, this will actually send out 32 individual tracks uh, to uh, your DAW. Um, that's how its audio interface works. It'll send out 32 separate um, tracks and it will receive six tracks back in as to where the core Kronos will only send out um will only send out two so you get a left and a right so it just sends out a main and that's what it goes into your doll here you actually get 32 channels via usb so yes it has less you know assignable analog outputs on the back but if you are connecting via usb to a doll or something like that this actually has far more audio outputs than the core chronos all right perfect now let's turn around let's take a look at the front of both of the units and let's talk about that all right, so now I got both of the units turned around here and we're going to take a look at the front panel of the Core Kronos. I do want to say, um, before I get talking about the uh, the front panel specifically, uh, is that the Core Kronos took me about a minute and 50 seconds to actually get it booted up. So, you know, it was off, I turned it on, it took a minute and 50 seconds for it to boot up. I don't have any extra sound packs or anything in here. Um, I don't have anything that's loading any extra anything that's being loaded into the ram um, so that's about the minimum you're going to get as far as boot time uh, a minute and 50 seconds and the yamaha montage when i started that up it took just uh over 16 seconds to be started up and ready to go so a lot of people are concerned about the boot time of the core chronos yes it is kind of a long uh kind of a long boot time um now for me personally, the only way I can really see that getting in the way is in a live performance. If somehow you lose power or it crashes or something like that, <clears throat> even though I've never actually had the core chronos crash on me, um, I've had it for years and I've used it, uh, live uh, in the studio, you know, everywhere, performances, rehearsals, everything. It's never actually crashed on me. Not, not one time. Now, of course, that's not everybody's experience. Some people have experienced, you know, a, a few crashes and stuff like that. But for me, I haven't really ex experienced any crashes with the Gore Chronos in general. My hardware uh, stuff is pretty solid. Doesn't crash or stutter or do anything, you know, out of the norm. Even, you know, I still have a Korg M50 and my Korg M50 has never actually crashed on me. And I've had that for, ooh, 11, 12 years or something like that. So that hasn't crashed at all either. But um, yes, if you were in a show, and your keyboard did go down, you did lose power, something like that, the Core Kronos is going to take longer than the montage by far to get it started back up. Now me, typically when I'm doing a show of any kind, uh, I've got, you know, this, you know, hooked up to, you know, I've got a computer or something, I've got a computer or something going or my NPC one or, you know, some other, you know, some other things that are happening. So if my keyboard happens to go down or something happened to go down or we lost power, uh, you know, it's going to just mess up the song anyway. So <laughs> it's not going to really matter all that much. It's going to take me longer to get everything all set back up and stuff like that and restart the tracks. And, you know, it's a, it's a whole big thing. If you lose power or something like that during a show, it's always bad. But you know, if you're just playing basic sounds and stuff like that out of it, yeah, this is going to take a longer time to, to boot up. Um, now let's take a look at the front panel of the, uh, core Kronos here. So the core Kronos is going to actually give you, uh, nine sliders, um, here, uh, and then the master counts as a slider as well. So it gives you uh, nine sliders. You have control of eight different, um, channels at one time, uh, hit a button, and you'd be controlling um, eight through 16. So you can control 16 different channels from the front panel. Then it gives you these, uh, like these different uh, Karma scene buttons and you know, they're 
you know, play and mute and stuff like that. They have a variety of different functions here. So you get all of these buttons as well. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight gives you 16 buttons. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight knobs as well. Uh, it gives you a value knob so you can, you know, change the value of different, you know, parameters and stuff inside, uh, not a knob, but a slider that gives you a little joystick, uh, over here as well for controlling, um, various parameters <clears throat> gives you a jog wheel and um then it gives you a set list button here so you can just hit, hit set list and it goes right to your set list and then it gives you a numeric keypad so you can just you know type in numbers and stuff that you want uh you just type them in and uh you're good to go there and it's got some buttons here like combi program sequence sampling global disk so you know you can be in your different modes that your keyboard has and then it has all of your bank buttons so you can choose your different banks and stuff like that and pull up your patches and stuff that way and then it's got transport controls you know like your start and stop you know pause you know go forward go back all that kind of stuff then it's got a sample like record button and uh, it's got you know, like your start stop for your sampling because this does have a full blown sampler um in it as well and uh we just kind of slide down here just a little bit uh we can see here that we actually have our pitch bin um and modulation is all in one it's just the joystick and then it's got two uh two buttons on it as well these two buttons right up here gives you those two buttons and uh and then it has a ribbon controller as well so that is the front of the korg chronos now let's take a look at the montage all right and so now we're looking at the front panel of the yamaha montage and i guess i'll start over here it has a whole host of buttons here um and you do a lot of different things with this you can control your arpeggiator i'm picking different parts and stuff like that uh a lot of your motion control stuff uh can be um, selected over here just using these buttons here you know you got your mute and your solo so you can mute and solo different tracks and stuff all with this kind of a button matrix over here you got your live set so you can get right to just like this has a just like the core chronos has a set list function this has live sets you get right to your live sets by hitting this live set button and uh, pull up your performances. Now this doesn't have a bunch of different modes. So the Core Chronos has like a combination mode, a program mode, a sequence mode, a sampling mode. This is always in performance mode. All of your sounds are always ready to go all the time. Uh, so they're they're unique, different. They're different um, from each other in that way. Um, it's got some directional buttons and stuff like that, so you can control what's happening on the screen. And uh, really, the way it's designed uh, is if you don't want to use the touch screen with a Yamaha montage, you don't really have to. You can pretty much do everything just by using the buttons. Now, if you want to use the touchscreen, then you can. So it's all about how you want to work and how you want your uh, your workflow to go. That's one of the benefits that this has that the Modi X, uh, the Yamaha Modi X doesn't have. They stripped away a lot of the buttons and so you are then more reliant on the screen. Um, but a lot of the functionality, most of the functionality is, is basically the same. It gives you a jog wheel and stuff like that. Um, and then you have your, you know, you have octave control, so you can control your octaves and transpose is right here on the front. That is not something that the, um, the Korg Kronos has. So if you want to just change your octave in the Korg Kronos really, really quickly, or if you wanted to transpose something really, really fast, uh, and the Yama in the, uh, in the uh, court chronos is not uh, it's not quite as quick um doing stuff like that then you've got your transport controls you know your your start your stop your record your forward back and stuff like that uh and then has the uh the infamous uh super knob there which you control i think it's 120 parameters all at once um which is kind of mind-boggling you can pretty much assign anything to the super knob and then control the super knob any kind of parameters controls and stuff that you want you can assign them to that super knob and control uh control everything and uh yeah so that's the uh, super knob and then the and then you have eight encoders as well and uh the thing i like about these is that the uh, they are led uh, they're backlit with leds so same with the sliders you get eight sliders and your sliders are actually have leds so you can look and you can tell at a glance uh where your parts and stuff are at um just looking at the uh, where the where the led is lit up because sometimes the slider could be all the way down here but your level will actually be up here or, or or something so you can look at it and tell where it is just by looking at it being lit up now with the core chronos it doesn't have that same functionality there's no leds by the sliders so your sliders don't necessarily represent 
where your levels and stuff are actually at so you can't really tell at a glance you do have to kind of look at the screen to see uh to see what's going on now uh, another thing about this is you get uh, eight sliders um with the core chronos you actually get nine now for some people it's like well nine eight what's the big difference well if you're playing organ an organ uh, manual has uh nine draw bars so when you are playing an organ sound in here uh, like a b3 or something like that then the sliders become your draw bars the same with the core chronos but this only has eight so you can't do the same exact settings that you would do on a real organ on this because you only have eight sliders. The Core Chronos gives you nine. So when you are playing using the CX3 sound engine in the Core Chronos, you actually have nine physical sliders for your draw bars and you can do it just like you would on a real organ. You can't actually do that on this because it's actually missing a slider. So if you're a big organ person, that could be possibly maybe could be a big deal to you um but then you have you know just a variety of, of encoders and stuff there and uh, we'll just kind of slide down just a little bit so we can see and um you have a pitch bin and uh and a mod wheel over here so it's not a joystick you get uh, the you get two separate wheels and then you get a ribbon controller on here just like you do on the um core chronos and, uh, and then you have some, instead of just having two buttons, you actually have, uh, you actually have four buttons over here for controlling various parameters, um, when you are playing. So those are the front panels. Now let's kind of get into the keyboards themselves and, uh, talk about a little bit how they work. All right. So now we're taking a look at the, uh, core chronos here. And, um, so this is the core chronos it's on. And so the Core Chronos has a few different modes. So it has combi mode, program mode, which is in now program mode. This is just, if you're choosing single sounds, you find them in program mode. So this is. I'm just going through. Just going through different. Going through different programs. Um, pretty self-explanatory. I can come over here to basically like a category search, and then I can search by categories. Right now it's in keyboard, and you can go to a, like a sub menu. You can go to your acoustic uh, pianos, or you can go to your synth kind of pianos, or your real EP. So it's gonna be like your road and whirlies and stuff like that. And it's got a bunch of different categories. It's got your organ, you know, it's got your bell and malice, your strings, your, you know, uh, voice, woodwinds, guitars, bass, you know, a whole bunch of different categories. But if I just say okay and hit okay here, uh, as you can see, it actually pulls up a specific interface here for the EP. So I can turn the vibrato on. All right, now I can adjust the intensity of the vibrato. I can adjust the speed of the vibrato. I've got an amp cabinet. I can turn on and off, just turn it on there. I can turn up the drive on it. Right, I can do all that there. I can adjust the trouble. I can adjust the bass just like you can on a real electric piano. Let's go to the bass here. All 
right? And I can adjust the the insert effect. So this has different um, um, like guitar pedals, just like on a real, just like on a real uh, electric piano. And you can go, and I can just go through them here. So that's a compression there. And I can change the various parameters of the compression itself. with any of the effects. Um, so it's just like a real, um, just like a real um, EP there. Um, let's get out of there. We don't need to necessarily go over that. Right, and then just by, you know, literally flipping this here, we can, you know, change the sound drastically. And it's right here, all in front of my face. Um, and then I can go and I can change. Okay, so right now it's on a time uh, EP1. We could change it to this one. And let's do a time EP5. Let's go here. Now let's pick something with a reed. Now that I picked a read, it's uh, it's different. So it gives me kind of a different interface that mimics the kind of EP that it is. So this really reminds me of like plugins and stuff that you would use. Now that's just the um, that's just the electric pianos. But um, let's see if I go to here. Let's go to keyboard and um, let's go down to organs and let me pick. Um, Jimmy's organ here. Now you can see that the interface is completely uh, different. So this gives you nine, independ nine independent sound engines. And so, so this particular one, it gives me the ability to do all the kind of organ editing that I want to do so it can you know pick the tone so uh, I could do a vintage tone or a clean tone as vintage we can make it mellow right I can make it clean clean and mellow I can make it clean and bright I can adjust what kind of, you know, the, the various controllers and stuff uh, that I want to have. I can control the percussion. I can control the, like the amp simulator. So I can control how fast I want the, the Leslie to speed up or the rotary speaker to speed up uh, when I speed it up or how slow I want it to go when I speed it up. I can control how fast or how slow it reaches its top speed. Um, and I can control, you know, if I'm, you know, going down to a lower speed, I can, you know, say, Hey, I want it to de decelerate at a certain rate. Um, I can even, um, choose which way I basically want the horn and the rotor facing when they get done spinning. Um, it's got like organ brakes and stuff in there. Um, so it's got all kinds of different things. Um, specifically for organ.
And then of course you have your draw bars. So it's got your draw bars and stuff like that that you can um, you can change and whatnot as well. And um, now that's one thing I like about this or the Nautilus. On the Nautilus, you actually have to use the um, uh, you have to use you have to use your um, your touchscreen to adjust your your draw bars. Um, and in a real practical playing situation using the touch screen is just not going to work i think there's a way you can assign it to some of the knobs uh that it has but then you know it doesn't have nine knobs crossed so you know you it's something that you kind of lose with the nautilus um that you actually get with the core chronos so if organ playing is one of the things that you do the core chronos having these faders actually makes a difference if that's the kind of playing um, you are going to do so that's a uh, program mode you get nine different independent sound engines and depending on which sound you choose which sound engine you're using your interface will change and is dedicated specifically for that sound and i really do love that it's just like working with um, plugins on a computer um then it has combination mode combination mode is for when you're going to set up your different um, layers and different sounds and stuff like that. So I've got uh, different layers and stuff here. So this is my piano and I got EP and a pad and a string maybe. Nope, not on this one. So I've got a drum track already set up for this one. So whenever you're going to set up your layers and uh, set up different splits and have different things happening across the uh, the keyboard, uh, typically you're going to be in combination mode. So if I wanted to set up a new combination, I come over here and uh, we go to user. We'll go to initialize combi here. Now everything is set up. Everything is initialized. Now I can come in here and I can change um, channel number one. I'm um, gonna choose a difference um, acoustic piano. Uh, let's see. Uh, we'll go to the German grand, maybe. Yep, German, Kronos German. Hit enter. Now I've got a German grand there. Hmm, didn't apply. Let's try that again. Let's go to the German Grand. Hit OK. Now it did. And if I wanted to add another sound, let's see, um, a bass maybe. Let's go here. Let's go to bass. And what bass are we going to choose? Doesn't really matter. Really? We'll just choose that one. Good. Hit enter. Can't hear it. I've got to go in my timbre parameters and I have to change the have to change the tone here to 01G. 
now you got a bass and a piano. Right, so now we have that um, set up. So now we have a bass and uh, a bass and a um, piano at the same time. And of course, you can then you can split it. Uh, you can split the channels and stuff like that. So you have a you know a bass on the left and a piano on the right, or whatever whatever you want to do. If you want to do different layers like this, let's do something that's not a bass. Let's go to my category search. Let's go to hmm, strings, maybe. Yeah, we'll go to strings. And uh, we'll just choose that one there. So now. So my number two is a little loud. Bring it down. And then I can go to my insert effects and I can control the insert effects on each um, instrument. Right now, none of the insert effects are on. I could turn on the insert effects. You get 12 insert effects per combination. So you have six, a total of 16 different instruments, but you get 12 insert effects. So you can use the same insert effects on some of the instruments, or you can apply, you know, maybe four insert effects to one instrument if you want to. It's really up to you. So you get 12 insert effects, plus you get um, two uh, master effects as well, and then two total effects, even on top of that. Uh, just keep in mind that if you are using a whole lot of effects in your core Kronos, that you are actually going to be eating into some of its polyphony because it is processor based. Now it does have a dynamic polyphony. Um, and so it will pull from certain sound engines and apply polyphony where it needs to apply it um, and pull it from where it doesn't need it. Uh, however, if you're using a, a ton of effects and stuff like that, um, then you are going to eventually start running into some um, some polyphony issues. Okay. So you have your combination mode, then it has a sequence mode. So Sequence mode is kind of like combination, but the difference is that when you're in sequence mode, this is the mode for you to actually do some sequencing, creating your songs. You get 16 tracks of MIDI, 16 tracks of audio. All right, so let's record something here real quick. Now let's go to uh, drums. Let's pick some drums here, and I'm just gonna go over here. We're just going to go to our drum track here. Not drum track, drum instrument. Pick a drum kit. We want it to be a natural drum kit. We'll do the studio drum kit. That's good. And hit record. So you have a sequencer um, and it's going to be 16 tracks of audio and 16 tracks of MIDI and you can go in, you can change all the various different track parameters. You can go into the uh, track edit. You can change all the different notes and stuff. Uh, you want to, you can delete tracks and, you know, um, uh, delete measures, move measures and stuff around um, all kinds of things. It's a full blown um, sequencer and uh, you also get to, uh, audio tracks as well. So you can record audio, you just plug into the inputs on the back and record, you know, audio to your content. And you get 16 tracks of that as well. And it all streams to a, all ends up being saved on a disc. Um, so on your hard drive there. So, um, so you have comedy mode, you have program mode, you have sequence mode, and you have a sampling mode. So you can plug in, you know, another keyboard into this and it supports full multi sampling, um, as well and um and then you can you know edit your loop points and stuff like that and have you know sample whatever you want and put it into the uh into the keyboard so it has a full sampler um as well so the core chronos is a very very powerful very 
very powerful um, keyboard. And pretty much if you're looking for an all-in-one solution, you want to do everything inside the board. The Core Chronos is one of the only keyboards now that's uh, left that you can still really do that. Um, and not for long, because I think I said it earlier, but the Core Chronos has, it was just discontinued by um, Korg. So if you're looking at maybe you know, getting a core Kronos, you want to get one as quickly as possible because it won't be long before they are all gone. So that's a basic look at, you know, a lot of the features in the core Kronos. Now let's go to the Yamaha montage and take a look at the way, uh, the way that works. All right. So now here we are, we're taking a look at the Yamaha montage. And so I have the Yamaha uh, Montage 7, so I know it's not, you know, directly analogous because this is not the 8, uh, 88 weighted. I didn't need that because I do have the Core Kronos in 88, and I do have a Roland RD2000 in 88 as well, so only needed a 7. And that uh, actually saves on some weight. This weighs 30-something pounds. It's still heavy. Um... But, you know, it's 60 something pounds. The Montage 8 is like 60 something pounds. The Kronos is uh, 50 something pounds. Uh, if you're looking for a light keyboard, neither one of these keyboards are the keyboard for you. So anyway, uh, with that said, here is the Montage. Now the Montage has one mode. You are constant, you are always in performance mode. It doesn't have like a, 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 a combination mode and then like a, uh, like a patch mode or a single mode or a program mode or something, you're always in um, performance mode, having access to all of your your sounds and everything all at once. There's just there's just one mode. Um, and I actually, when I first got it, it was a little confusing because I was used to the traditional modes and whatnot. Uh, but after you know using it for a while, I actually prefer this kind of a setup. I actually prefer it better. Um, you know, always being in, you know, performance mode. <clears throat> now this has two independent sound engines, has the AWM2 sound engine and it has the FMX sound engine. So it has two sound engines. Each sound engine has 128 voice polyphony and they are separate. So they don't like steal from one another or anything like that. You know, the AWM2 sound engine has 128 voices and the FMX sound engine has 128 voices. So they both have 128 voices. Um, let's go ahead and uh, let's go to my performance here. So it's got a category search and kind of like the Kronos, you just hit the, you can just hit a button and uh, now you're searching through various categories. Um, and so I can, you know, I got piano, keyboard, organ, guitar, bass, strings, brass, same kind of concept, um, the category search. I can pick the various categories by hitting the buttons as well. So this is my piano. This is my keyboard, organ, guitar, bass, strings, brass, woodwinds. And so basically I can do everything on here using buttons versus using the touchscreen, um, whatever I want to do. Now, one major key difference, uh, let me just go back to my pianos here and let's choose the CFX Concert Grand. That's kind of their flagship. Oh, my slopping, my playing really is sloppy when I play on, try to play piano on somebody weighted keys <laughs> after playing them on uh, weighted keys. Anyway, uh, so this is the CFX Concert Grand. It's very good. I like this piano. 
But something you have to notice here is that this piano actually takes up four different slots. Now, you can control a total of eight parts from the keyboard itself. Now, you can have 16 parts, just like the Gore Chronos, but uh, nine through 16 are going to have to be controlled by some sort of external MIDI source, like another keyboard or something like that. You can't actually control them from the key bed. You can only control eight on the core chronos. You can actually control 16 different channels, split them all up and stuff on the keyboard the way you want them and you're ready to go. And the montage, you only get eight. So you get half the control, half of the, you can control half of the same number of instruments, right? Now, this particular performance actually takes up four different slots it takes up four different parts so i got five six seven and eight where i can add different sounds and stuff to it but one through four is actually taken up so in the core chronos if you pull up a piano it doesn't matter which piano it is it only takes up one one slot so when you're in combination mode you can literally do 16 different instruments if you want to now you can actually do more than that because you can you know, layer some things in some different ways, but you get at least, you know, a minimum of 16. You can, you know, you can layer them on there, but you can't do it with the montage. You can only control eight at once. And this takes up four. And the reason why it takes up four is because the different pianos um, are set to handle different velocity levels and they have different um, samples and stuff like that. Um, So they, you know, you trigger them depending on where you hit, how hard you hit, different samples will actually be playing. So um, I can come in here. Let's say I wanted to look at this part here and I can say edit to this part and this part here. So what I did was I just went into this first part, part number one. And if we come over here and we edit it, hit edit. And you can see now there's an element one, element two, element three, element four, element five, and element six are all activated, or I can see it actually over here. Um, and I can mute them, make it mute the different elements using the buttons. So this one part is made up of then six different elements, right? So if I start turning off or muting, so all the elements are actually turned off in this part. Right? So it's kind of strange. If I turn them back on, you can hear what I was playing. If I turn them off, and the sound you are hearing is actually coming from one of the other parts, right? So if I do an edit here, and this one has three different elements in it. And so that's how the various parts are actually, or the various performances are actually built. So you get eight parts that you control from the keyboard um, in every single performance. And every single performance can have up to eight different elements. And those eight different elements are actually the raw waveforms that are used in order to make the sound. So um, it's great for building sounds, And a lot of deep sound design and stuff like that. Um, you just, you know, layer up the stuff, you know, layer up the sounds the way you want them and, you know, and you're kind of off to the races. So you can get very, 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 um, you can get very, very deep. Uh, so let's get here. Let's go back to my category search. Now in your category search, um, it's kind of color coded. So you have um, blue. Um, some of these are in blue. Blue means that it is a multi part sound. 
So if I hit enter, you can see this takes up four different parts. Um, come back into category search, let's click on another blue one and then hit enter. And this one takes up five. Right, so that takes up five, but if I come back to my category search and I pick on one that's green, so the green ones only take up one part. So they're single part performances, so you only have one single part. And so if I'm going to do a lot of editing and stuff like that, I mean a lot of layering and stuff, I'm normally going to be picking a lot of single part sounds uh, if I'm going to be layering a whole bunch of stuff together. Um, but with that said, the, in, the uh, interfaces and stuff are pretty different. Um, but one thing I do like about this, the montage, let's say I wanted to add another part to this, right? I wanted to layer some sounds. I just click on uh, a different one here. And uh, I'm going to choose, uh, we'll do a pad and um, and I want a warm pad and we'll just do this one here, hit enter. So now I have a pad and a piano and we, you know, using my sliders, I can control the levels. Now, if I wanted to add a string, I can come in here. Let's see here. Let's do a string here and we can go to strings. And um, yeah, we'll just pick that Celtic uh, violin, hit enter. So I find layering different sounds if I didn't want it. Come over here, just hit delete. And yes, I want to delete it and now it's gone. So I find layering sounds and stuff like that to be actually easier on this. Let's say, maybe just add a bass, go to number three, um, choose bass. Um, we're gonna do an electric bass and we'll choose that one. I got a bass, a piano, and a pad. Now, if I just wanted the bass to be on the lower register, I just have to set up my high key that I want it to be. So I just click right here and uh, hit keyboard, and then mm, the highest note's gonna be C. So now that is set in place. Anything above the C, there's no bass below. Now I can go in further. Let's say, okay, I want to change the split point for the piano because I don't want the piano down here with the bass. I can just come here, kind of do the same thing. We're going to set the low note for the piano and just hit uh, keyboard. And uh, this is going to be a low note for the piano. And now, and I can do the same thing here for the um, for the pad as well. And uh, we're gonna make it that as well. And now, now in the lower register, now we have his bass. So I find layering sounds to be easier on here than it is on the on the on the chord chronos. So just kind of layering sounds, splitting sounds, and getting your your stuff set up pretty quickly. Um, 
It's actually very, it's actually very simple. Now I'm gonna come over here to the piano and we're just gonna hit uh, edit. And I'm gonna come down here to the effects menu. This is lots of menu diving, just like the core chronos. But uh, as you can see, the, I get two insert effects per part. So I get uh, two insert effects on channels one through 16, plus I get two insert effects on the A to D, the A and D, the A to D inputs coming inside the board as well. Um, but each part, it gets two insert effects. And uh, when I layer the parts together, you can see that both of the parts actually have, I mean, the, p the piano, I'm on the piano and the piano has its insert effects on. So I can turn them off. I'm gonna turn them on. But they come in with the insert effects. And uh, the same is going to be true for the uh, bass. If I go to the bass and hit uh, edit and I'm in the effects, you can see the insert effects for the bass. are on as well. So, you know, you got your VCM EQ 501, that's the first effect, and then you got an amp simulator, and that's your second effect. So with the Core Chronos, you get a total of 12 insert effects per combination, um, and you can divvy those up however you want to divvy them up. In the montage, you get two insert effects uh, per channel. So you'll get a total of um, 32 technically 34 if you're counting the input that it has 34 insert effects in your um, performance um, but your performance you can only have two insert effects per channel so you can't have a tremolo a compressor and uh, uh, some other effect all on one channel using your insert effects uh, but in the core chronos you can but you're only going to get 12 total so you decide whether or not you want to have two insert effects per channel or whether or not you want to have 12 insert effects and you can divvy them up however you want to uh however you want to do it so right so love that really do love the way that works there then you have the uh, let's go back to my live sets here you have your the infamous super knob and you can set up the super knob to control whatever you want to so right now the what it's setting up to uh, control here is my performance this is the FM piano but as I turn it, it turns down the FM piano and turns up the acoustic pianos. Or you have somewhere in between. And you can set up the super knob to control, you know, any parameter that you want to. And uh, if you don't want to use your hand to control the super knob, you can set the super knob to be controlled by one of the pedals. And then as you move the pedal up and down, I have a Yamaha FC7 pedal. And uh, so I'm going to control the super knob. Oftentimes I would just do it with my foot. And I won't have to actually reach up and uh, I won't have to actually reach up and touch it. Now, uh, let's go somewhere else here. Let's go to our performance. Um, let's go to category search. I'm going to do an initialized performance. Hit enter. And it just gives me a piano. And we're gonna just choose a different piano. So I'm gonna go to category search here and let's choose a piano, CFX stage. Let's choose this one, hit enter. And it just seems like a lot of reverb on there. That's okay. We're just going to go here. We're going to go to edit and uh, we're going to go to our effects here and we're just going to turn down. So there's reverb. So we got that kind of turned down and um, let 
Now, if I wanted to add a drum track, which is something you can do here as well, I can just hit shift and control assign, and then it brings me into a drum, uh, you know, uh, the ability to choose a drum kit and patterns and stuff like that. And I can turn up the So, so we have that uh, drum kit set up there and, but what I can do here, so let's go exit. It's a little loud. Just turn this piano down a little bit. All right, here we go. All right, so we have that drum kit. Now, what I can do with the Yamaha Montage, that's uh, one drum kit. It's not just a drum kit, but it's, uh, <laughs> it's a, um, a drum track. But I can come in to this drum track and I can hit this and we're gonna hit edit and we're gonna adjust the arpeggio because the drum tracks are in the arpeggiator. And uh, I'm gonna come down here to individual. And so this is my first one here, right here. All right, that's enough of that. And now I'm gonna come down to another one here, choose number two. And um, I'm gonna go to category search and we're just going to give it a different pattern here. So, let's go. So we hit enter there. Now I got two. I'm gonna change. All right, so let's go back in here and let's just edit it again. Let's go to the arpeggio and then we can go to number three. We can go to category search and we can choose a different a uh, different one all together. Here we go. Right, so we'll just choose that one for now. And now all those are gonna be mapped to here so I can control the various uh, ARPs that I've picked. So this is the ARP number one. ARP number two. ARP number three. Now that's possible in the Kronos with Karma uh, as well, but it is a lot more complicated to do. <laughs> uh, it's very, very easy to do in the um, Yamaha montage. So something that I love about that. Also, I love uh, scenes. So let's go here and um, I'm just gonna do an initialized combination again. Oh man, let's see here, boom. We're gonna do an initialized combi, hit enter. 
and I'm going to pick a different um, sound and uh, no, we're going to do a different sound what we need to do. So we will hear we're going to go to category search and uh, let's pick an EP of some sort. Uh, this will work. Hit enter there. Now we're going to do the second one and um, I'm going to go to, uh, let's go to a string. Uh, what's going to be here, here, here we go. All right, so then we get a string. So let's say I'm going to actually mute my strings. I can mute the strings and now I just have the electric piano. And if I wanted to save that, like, hey, you know, I actually want to save that. I can uh, hold down the store button, hit the, hit the scene number one, and let's go to number two here. And so just hit shift and store. Now the scene is stored. And uh, let's go to mute that and say shift and store. So now it's stored. So scene one is stored with the strings muted. And then when I hit the number two, they're no longer muted. So it's basically a snapshot. Now I can mute the, let's say mute that. So it's just strings, hit shift, and then number three. So now it's stored as the scene for number three. So number three is just the strings by itself. Number two is going to be both of them together, nothing muted. And number one is going to be just the EP, strings muted. So that gives you really good um, real-time control. Um, you don't necessarily have to switch performances. Um, you can just hit your different scenes and the different ones can be muted. And not only that, but uh, whichever parameters and stuff that you set up, you can just hit, you could just save the scene and it will recall those as soon as you hit the button. All right, and something else that I want to go over is I want to go over um, like the DAW integration. So let me just go to let's go to my uh, category search here. Let's just pick. Um, it doesn't really matter. Anything that I can come down here and I can hit remote and remote. This is where you can actually go in and like control your DAW. So uh, the DAW integration on this is great. Uh, it's a lot better than the core Kronos for sure. Uh, the core Kronos doesn't have anything like this. Um, so uh, right now it's uh, it's on track so I can control my various tracks and stuff like that using my sliders and so on and so forth. And I can cycle through, you know, the different, you know, my different uh, channels and stuff. And I can control the tracks and stuff using the, the sliders and whatnot. And, um, and, and then your, your, encoders and stuff up here become your various knobs and, and stuff like that for when you are recording um, into a doll. Okay. And then, you know, you got your transport controls and stuff like that. Uh, I can set it up here where now everything is just ready to receive, you know, some sort of a, or send uh, some sort of a CC message so I can control various plugins. So I can do my MIDI learning and stuff like that with my plugins and I can use this to control whatever plugins I have going on as well. Um, and then I can go into my controller settings too and uh, my control too. That is, you know, I can set my, both of my foot pedals, my foot switches, uh, my foot controllers, they can be set to control things in my doll, plus the pitch bin, the mod wheels uh, and the ribbon controller. 
I can set those however I want to um, set them up. I can go on the settings right now. My mine is specifically set to live uh, the DAW integration because I use Ableton Live, but it has some other ones in here. And it's got Cubase, Logic Pro, Pro Tools, and uh, Live. Now, of course, you can use it with other ones, but this one is already set up and ready to go for some of the more uh, popular DAWs. And so I can control Ableton Live and control my scenes and control my, you know, my different clips and stuff like that using using my keyboard. So that's a great um, setup, great, um, great DAW integration because that's what it's designed to do. So yes, it's not a full blown uh, workstation, but it does have excellent DAW integration. Now, I think the Roland Phantom has better DAW integration than the Yamaha Montage, but the Montage most certainly beats out the Korg Kronos. And also, one of the things I really loved, and I touched on this uh, a little earlier, let's go back home. Let me just uh, pick category search. Let's do, um, let me pick, um, where's my, uh, we'll do a drum kit up here. Um, that'll work. So I have this drum kit set up here. Now, the really cool thing about this drum kit, not just this drum kit, but the way this is set up is that um, I actually get 32 outs via USB to a computer. So if I'm going to do multi-tracking, I can. So with this drum kit, what I could do is I could literally set, um, if I'm gonna record the audio from the drum kit to a computer, I can actually set this up so that my kick is on one channel, my snares are on another channel, my toms, if I wanted to, I could set these up to be stereo if I wanted to, set up stereo toms, I can set up my cymbals to be on different channels, and then when I hit record in the DAW and just start to play, it would save all of those different all those different, um, all of those different keys, it would save the the audio on different tracks. So I'd have a separate track for my bass drum, and the separate tracks for my snares, and separate tracks for my toms, and I could mix it and stuff the way I wanted to. And you can do all the way up to thirty two uh, tracks um, with the montage. That is something that the Core Chronos is not really capable of doing, you only get two channels out of the um, USB. Um, so you get two channels out, two channels in, this gives you 32 out, six in. So um, it makes a uh, makes a huge difference when you're trying to multi-track into a DAW. It saves me a lot of time if I can come in here and just play the drums. And, um, and then all of those would be set to different um, set to different tracks inside of my DAW. So the DAW integration with this is really a cut above the Korg Kronos. Now, as far as what I like better about the Korg Kronos, uh, I do like having the nine independent sound engines. Uh, I like to have like, so if I come over here, category, let's go to Oregon and I'm R and hit. You know, this is, um, you know, it's got two parts to make this performance up, to make this organ sound. And if I'm going to go to, you know, edit it, uh, you hit edit, it's going to be just like every other um, sound. So, you know, this is set to a rotary speaker and stuff like that. But if I want to, you know, click off noise and, and different things, it doesn't have a dedicated interface interface for you know editing the organ i can come over here to the rotary speaker and i could choose a different rotary speaker if i wanted to on tremolo right but in essence it's the same because it's the awm2 sound in essence it is the same as you know uh pretty much 
everything else the way you edit. Now this one is an FM organ. And I can come over here and uh, we can hit edit. And it's just like editing any other um, FM kind of a sound. If I come to the effects, hey, you get the, you get your two insert effects and stuff like that. One of them is a rotary speaker. I can change it and so on and so forth. But it's not like a dedicated interface where I can really get in there and dial in the way I want the organ to be. You just have to use the parameters that are available in the AWM2 sound engine. And... Um, I mean, in the FMX sound engine for that one in particular. Um, so I do like having the nine independent sound engines. I do like being able to control 16 sounds at once uh, from the key bed. Instead of just eight. Um, and like, you know, like this one takes up four. So, um, you know, you really only get four other ones that you can actually, you know, layer and do different things with. Um, but uh, overall, uh, I would say that I have come to appreciate the workflow and the way I can layer sounds and the and everything. I come to appreciate it on the Yamaha Montage. I really, really like the DAW integration and being able to do multi-track recording and stuff like that in uh, one failed swoop, it offers me a lot of flexibility if I, you know, being able to control so many different channels um, coming out of the keyboard um, itself. So I love the fact that it has that remote, the, you know, for, you know, setting up Ableton Live and stuff like that, um, because I integrate, you know, this, these keyboards into my studio and stuff like that. Um, and I really do like the, um, the way you set up the sound parameter, the way you set up your controls. The way you set up your controls and stuff like that to control your various sounds and stuff like that. In this keyboard, it's a lot easier to route stuff to the super knob or route it to these knobs or route it to the sliders and stuff. Um, in the core Cronus, you have to use something that's called the AMX mixer. Um, it's a little more confusing, um, in my opinion, to be using that. Um, now, they're both going to have fairly steep learning curves. Uh, but I think because of the core chronos, because here's the downside of having nine separate sound engines, nine different sound engines, you have to learn all the sound engines separately. So the CFX, I'm not CFX, the CX3, you know, organ sound engine doesn't work anything like the SGX2 sound engine. So you have to learn them separately in order to be able to edit your instruments. Now it does offer some flexibility and stuff like that, but you are learning a separate engine. And here you're really learning two engines, okay? Now, as far as which one's more powerful, like which one does more stuff, that's, um, that is most certainly going to be the Court Kronos. Court Kronos does more stuff. It is more powerful. It is a workstation. It does more things. Um, but as far as which one is going to be more intuitive, in my opinion, this keyboard here is more intuitive and I can pretty much get everything that I need to get done on here, just like I can with the montage. I mean, just like I can with the Court Kronos. Uh, the set list, uh, live sets leaves a little something to be desired. Um, I do miss when I'm using this, I miss that master EQ that's right there on the core chronos where you can adjust, you know, the EQ of the set list. Uh, so if you go into a venue and, um, you know, the sound system is a little different or a little off or whatever, you can just quickly adjust, you know, your, your settings and, uh, make it sound right. Um, and this one. It, it doesn't have that. And also it does have some color coding. Um, like, you know, see this one's red and this one's yellow, but when you're really, you know, looking at it down at a glance, just that one little strip of color. Uh, sometimes it's really kind of hard to see. I like the fact that the whole square is colored in the, in the, um, in the core chronos.
Now, I think both of the instruments sound really well. They both sound really great. Um, they sound different. They have different, um, some different character, but I like the way they sound. But as far as the workflow and how they work, I really do prefer the montage over the uh, core chronos, even though still to this day, the core chronos is still my main instrument, uh, still my main keyboard. But I think, you know, gradually that's going to begin to change, especially as I start implementing more of Ableton Live, you know, in my actual live sets and, and different things like that. I think the, uh, at some point, the core chronos, just because of its interface and the way it, you know, it's, it's very, very self-contained. It does a good job when you're working just with it. But as soon as you want to reach out kind of to the rest of the world, uh, that's where you start running into some issues and its age and stuff really begins to show. But they're both, they're both very, very, very good keyboards. Just remember that this is not a workstation. So if you're going to be doing full productions and stuff like that, you're going to need some other tools. Um, the Core Chronos, if you want to just work in the board, that gives you the ability to definitely gives you the ability to do that. But I really do like these scenes, setting up these scenes. I really do like the ARPs and stuff where you can just, you know, you know toggle through them. I like the way it does all the DAW integration. Um, it's just, you know, it's more modern. And so it fits better into my setup. Normally when I'm using the Core Chronos, I'm using it really just kind of like by itself. I don't use it with of, you know, other gear. I mean, I'm going to have a two keyboard setup, but I'm saying I'm using it by itself. It's not necessarily controlling anything or I'm not using it to control a DAW or anything like that with the montage. I can do those things. So, um, if I was to recommend one for someone to buy, if you don't, uh, well, I can't really, <laughs> I guess I can't give a recommendation. They both have their strengths and their weaknesses. Uh, the nine sound engines is really, really hard to beat. Um, being able to do a lot of your multi-sampling and stuff like that and you set up your loop points and stuff, if that's the kind of stuff you need, you definitely need to be looking at a Kronos instead of a montage. If you don't need those things, you want a modern setup, you want to, you're integrating it with the DAW, you're going to be controlling Ableton Live and stuff like that. Um, you're going to be doing multi-track recording from here to a DAW, then this is definitely the way to go. You do not want to get a core Kronos. But at the end of the day, they are both very, very powerful keyboards. If I only had one of them, I could make both of them work and do everything I needed to do. Now, maybe harder on one or a little more, you know, unintuitive on a different one. Uh, but the reality is, as I could, I could, I could make it work. They're both powerful, great top of the line machines. And um, that's why I say they're both, uh, they're my, they're my favorite keyboards. Um, my Yamaha Montage my core chronos and my nord uh those are my uh, those are my favorite keyboards that i own so anyway with that said uh i hope this is helpful it's been helpful if i've been helpful if you like these kind of in-depth videos please go ahead and hit that like button and the subscribe button and hit the bell notification so that you can get notifications when i upload new stuff thanks for sticking with me this long and i will see you guys on the next video